Cook. I'm Mayan and Kemp, and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining today's Dataversity webinar, What is a Data Steward and What Do They Do, with Bob Siner. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to a large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. We you like to tweet. We encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG, Real World Data Governance. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Let me introduce our speaker for today, Bob Siner. Bob is the President and Principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher of the Data Administration Newsletter, TDAN.com. Bob has been a recipient of the Damon Professional Award for significant and demonstrable con contributions to the data management industry, and Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And I will give the floor to Bob. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much, Shannon. Thank you, everybody, for attending this greatly anticipated webinar. Um, I think this webinar was originally scheduled for January, and we had to postpone it to this month due to some family issues that I had, but I'm glad that everybody is here. And I think this is a great topic, a, a very interesting topic to a lot of people, and hopefully uh, you'll get a lot of it. As I said, this was originally supposed to be done in January. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up as to what the webinars that are coming up over the next couple of months. And we're going to be doing a webinar webinar called Comparing World-Class Solutions in Data Governance with a panel of practitioners um, doing some Q&A with myself. June webinar is going to be a special webinar. It's actually going to take place on a special day. It's going to take place on a Wednesday rather than a Thursday because I will be speaking at the DGIQ, the Data Governance and Information Quality um, Conference during that time, so we thought that we would move it up a day early, and we take advantage of all the practitioners and all of the thought leaders that we have at that conference in San Diego. In general, we'll be doing governance for master death, and then we have another, uh, another set of really interesting webinars coming up in uh, the months after that. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about this one. I think that you're going to find that some of my viewpoints around data stewards and who they are and what they do may be a little bit different than the kind of the mainstream uh, thoughts of who data stewards are and what they do. Um, I think everybody would agree that data stewards play a, a very important role in most data governance initiatives. And just to let you know, I spend a lot of my time working on data governance initiatives for a lot of different organizations. And the truth is that the way that they define who stewards are and what they do um, differ from one uh, one organization to the next. So hopefully you'll see a little bit of yourself in the stuff that I'm talking about. If not, perhaps maybe it'll give you some insight as to uh, some of the things that you might want to be thinking about in regards to stewards in your organization. So one thing we all agree on is that stewards play a vital role, a very important role in those governance initiatives. But the question that seems to be asked almost more than any other question is, what does it mean to be identified as a steward? Um, what does a steward do? How do they get involved? How much time can we expect to need for our stewards? And, you know, if you ask different people from different organizations, you're going to get vastly different answers depending on who you ask. And I apologize a little bit. I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to do the best as I can. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully you can uh, you can take a whole bunch of stuff away from this webinar. Um, a questions that people ask are, is there an industry standard? for what data stewards are and who they are and what they do, um, or does it depend on the makeup and the culture of the organization? Is there one steward for each type of data, as I've seen with a lot of the organizations that I've worked with? Or are there multiple stewards for each type of data and multiple types of stewards? We're going to walk through those things in the session here. Um, is the data steward a title or, or is it a more holistic role? What does the end of life of a typical steward look like, and is there even such a thing as a typical steward? Um, the abstract that perhaps got you to uh, attend this session here, um, this is another real world data governance webinar that I do in conjunction with the fine folks from Dataversity. Um, the webinar is going to focus on identifying specific activities 
activities of students and other roles and responsibilities per design of your program. And I think you're going to see that the individuals that are identified as being data stewards really could be almost anybody in your organization, and they can play a whole lot of different roles. So this is the, uh, the agenda for the session today. We're going to talk about the data steward role depending on data governance approach. We're going to talk about what stewards do and when they do it. We'll talk about utilizing data stewards to operationalize your data governance program, and then we'll kind of catch at the end of the session and everything else you need to know about data stewards. And if there's things you have questions about regarding stewards, please submit them via the Q&A box down at the bottom left-hand, bottom right-hand corner of your screen. What a data steward is and whether or not there is an industry standard or whether or not there should even be an industry standard under the opinion that... Um, that there really shouldn't be an industry standard for what data stewards are. It really depends on your organization and how you put your governance program together. Um, who should come up with this definition? Well, I think it's really dependent on the people that are, um, are defining your data governance program for your organization. And it really be different depending on what your organization is doing as far as governance and stewardship is concerned. agree that the data stewards are basically the glue that hold governance together. Uh, I've seen organizations that have called them data governance programs. Obviously, I've seen organizations that have called them data stewardship programs. Oftentimes, these organizations are saying the same thing. The um, fact is that governance and stewardship are very different. If you know, um, if you've attended one of my webinars in the past, you know, I define data governance as being execution and enforcement authority over the management of data and data-related assets. So data governance could be a set of processes. It could be a set of procedures that are specific to your organization. The stewards are the people in your organization that have accountability for the data. So the definition that I use for data steward in this presentation is that a data steward is a person that defines, produces, or uses data as part of their job and has a fine level of responsibility for assuring the quality in that definition, production, or usage of data. Well, if you look at that definition, the truth is that a data steward could almost be anybody in the organization. Almost everybody in the organization either defines data or produces data or uses data as part of their job. Do we identify who each and every one of those individuals are? Uh, probably not. But it's a good idea to know that you have stewards of a specific type of data in a specific part of your organization. So I'll share with you some tools that I've worked with and I've, uh, I've demonstrated in the past that will help you to record who your stewards are um, and in what parts of the organization they reside. Many of you are readers of the, uh, the Data Administration Newsletter. That's the newsletter that Shannon mentioned at the beginning of this webinar. But just recently, I published an article that was called Science Rules for Becoming a Data Steward. Now, the intention of that article was to ruffle a few feathers to get people talking about, um, about rules, basically, for becoming a data steward. And the fact was that you know I expected to get a lot of pushback from individuals, a lot of individuals telling me that this is true. Um, but the fact is that almost to a person, the people that responded to that, uh, that article, that I was right on target for what they were thinking. So let me show you these rules for becoming a steward with you, and you tell me whether or not you think they make sense or not. If you get a chance, please go into the Data Administration Newsletter at tdan.com and, uh, and look for the article of Signer's Rules for Becoming a Data Steward. First rule is, and it's something that I shared with you on the previous slide, is the data steward can be absolutely anybody. Like I said before, somebody who defines data or produces data or uses data as part of their job typically would have some level of accountability for how they define, produce, and use that data. If that's the case, and if we say that a steward can be everybody or anybody, um, it might make sense for us to record who each and every one of those stewards are. It may a relationship to data, and it's not a position. Although I've been in organizations 
where they identified people as being data stewards, and they've actually given them the title of data steward. I don't really agree with that. I think that, again, people that follow a non-invasive approach to data governance, which is the approach that I have, have talked about in, in many of the prior webinars, um, being a steward really describes a relationship to the data, and it's not necessarily a position. Um, and as I said, anybody in the organization could be identified as a steward, but that doesn't mean we need to identify who each of them are. What we want to do is we want to identify certain types of stewards, people that have steward responsibilities for data across the entire organization or across a certain part of the organization. If we went and recorded everybody's name in our database of who the stewards are, I think it would be a little bit of overkill. So typically a data steward is not to be a data steward. A data steward is somebody in your organization who already has some levels of accountability for the data. The steward does not have to have the title of data steward. And in fact, for the organizations that I've worked with, uh, none of them have had people in the organization who have had titles of data stewards. They could be a fine person who's entering data into a system. They could be a person who's creating reports. Um, and doing analytics within the organization. Um, they don't need to change their title to data steward. In fact, as I said before, a steward could be anybody. Um, if they are the finder for their part of the organization or if they're creating reports associated with the data in their part of the organization, to be able to keep the titles that they have. And they could identify it as being a steward, but that doesn't mean it's a lot more invasive if you need to go and change people's titles to being data stewards rather than the titles that they already hold. They do not have to be told how to do their job, and that kind of goes hand in hand with the sixth rule for becoming a data steward. Um, I do not necessarily agree that there should be public or industry data steward certification. I think a data steward does what they do within their organization and how, it's, how governance and stewardship is defined within their organization and have an industry certification of data stewards, to me, I said it's a load of bunk. I know a lot of people probably disagree with that. Some of the organizations that certify stewards would certainly disagree with it. Um, certainly, I can see certifying individuals to be data governance professionals, people that are running programs, putting programs in place, but the individuals, and there's oh so many of them within your organization who are data stewards, they do not have to be told how to do their job. They can be told when they're going to get engaged in activities that a steward gets engaged with, but if you go to people and you tell them, here's how we want you to do your job, you're oftentimes going to get a lot more pushback from individuals than uh, if you go to them and say, we've recognized you or we've identified you as being a steward of data. In times I've gone into organizations and I've sat in a room with a, a whole lot of people and they've pointed at an individual and said, this person over here, Joe, he is the customer data steward. This person, Mary, she's the product data steward. Um, we've got different stewards for different types of data, but we've got one of each. Well, again, that's not necessarily the way that a lot of organizations are putting governance and stewardship programs into place. If there's a couple of different people that are defining data, to find the same data, we need to identify who they are. There's a couple different people or many different people that are entering data and the accountability for how they enter the data. We need to identify who those people are. So the fact is, in most organizations, there will typically be more than one data steward for each type of data within the organization. And steward training should focus on formalizing accountability and get people to do the right thing at the right time rather than telling people how to do their job. So, again, I wrote this article to be somewhat controversial. Um, however, it seemed like a lot of people agreed with me that you know, if we don't go and knock people over the head with a stick and tell them that they're a steward and give them extra work to do, that they're going to accept the role of being a data steward a lot better in that way than if you go and, and assign them to be data stewards. So, please, when you get a chance, go out to the TDAN publication and the article and uh, provide some feedback to me on what you think as to whether or not I, I'm way off base or what I say makes sense about um, becoming a data steward. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the steward role depending on the, uh, the governance approach that is used within an organization. 
find there's basically three basic approaches that organizations take to defining a data governance program. And we're uh, also in identifying who the data stewards are. There's a non-invasive approach, which you've heard me talk about before. We identify people in the role rather than assigning people to roles. We leverage existing responsibilities rather than giving responsibilities to individuals as something that's new and over and above their existing work effort. So everything that I talk about tends to point towards the fact that we want to leverage existing responsibilities rather than assign things to people as being new responsibilities. The command and control approach, and that's when you assign people into specific roles and you give people new responsibilities. Well, if you're going to assign people into roles and you're going to give them new responsibilities, um, the chances are the first question that they're going to ask is where does this get prioritized and all of the other things that I have to do. So if we identify people that are stewards rather than assign them and we leverage what they're doing already and help them to do a better job at that, that's a much less invasive approach to putting governance in place. The third approach that I've seen organizations take to data governance is what I call two-by-four approach. And what do I mean by two-by-four approach? It's almost as though you take people in your organization you smack them over the head with a stick with a two-by-four, tell them that data governance is not optional and that they need to make time. Well, oftentimes that puts people back on their heels um, where they don't necessarily want to welcome data governance. They, they look as though it's being forced down their throat. But if you take a non-invasive approach and you identify stewards and recognize them for what they already do, oftentimes data governance is much more accepted into an organization. So the way we identify the steward role really depends on the approach they take to data governance. And it's different being non-invasive than it is to take a two-by-four approach. Certain to clearly identify roles and responsibilities. Well, um, oftentimes individuals that are identified as stewards, they're not handed a whole bunch of new and uh, new things that they need to do. They said, we recognize you for having an association to the data. We want to make sure that if you're sharing data, that you understand the rules associated with how the data can be shared and how the data can't be shared. If you're defining new data, we want you to already know that there's data that with the same definition or a similar definition in your organization. It's, it's very important to identify the, the roles and responsibilities, but have not to hand these to people as something that is brand new to them and it's going to be over and above their existing work effort. So what are the typical responses people have to the roles that are defined for data stewards? People are concerned about these things that I'm displaying on the screen right here. They're worried about stepping on people's toes, giving them too much or too little responsibility, sharing responsibility. Um, people get concerned, um, especially when they are handed new responsibilities um, or handed responsibilities and told, now you're the data steward for this specific data. You can understand that it would ruffle people's feathers across the organization where there may be other individuals who are also defining and producing and using that data who say, well, why was that person identified as the steward and not as myself? fact is they both should be identified as stewards and they both should be recorded somewhere so people can get their hands on some type of a list or some type of a database or what I call a common data matrix to help people to identify who the stewards are of the data across the organization. Um, putting people into positions to make decisions that, that may not please everybody, that's another concern that we have about identifying or assigning people to be the stewards. Identifying the people that will be the authorities. Well, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. What a specific role of, of a data steward, of a certain type of data steward, that will, they will have responsibility for the data um, across the organizations. They'll be the authorities. They'll be the decision makers when everybody who's a steward of data is not necessarily a decision maker. They must they just to find producing used data as part of their everyday job. Um, people get concerned about escalating concerns of the authorities. Um, the operating model that I'm going to share with you in a couple minutes here and that I've shared in, uh, in previous uh, webinars, um, there's a specific set of roles and responsibilities and a way to escalate these, uh, these 
responsibilities or, or escalate issues regarding data throughout your organization from an operational level, tactical level, and to a strategic level. Organizations address and alleviate the concerns that I listed on the previous page. Well, first of all, a lot of organizations that I work with and a lot of other organizations as well follow what we call as a non-invasive approach to data governance. By non-invasive, we don't assign people into roles. We don't give people titles of data steward. We identify and recognize them for what they presently do. And therefore, we can have multiple stewards of each different type of data across the organization. Where a conflict might exist is when we identify people to be the decision makers for a certain type of data across the organization. And in that situation, oftentimes it becomes people at the strategic level who can identify and make sure that we know who the individuals are that the, are the authorities of that data across the organization. Um, oftentimes, when a program is being defined, that's one of, the, one of the main backbones of defining a data governance program is defining the roles and responsibilities that go along with the program. And if you define roles and responsibilities in such a way that you give people more responsibility than they should have, or you take responsibility away from individuals that should have it, then obviously that causes some conflict. So we can kind of avoid that conflict by using this non-invasive approach and identifying stewards rather than assigning people to be data stewards. So sometimes in organizations, what I suggest is we the role of the data steward evolve through the natural process. Some organizations want to have asked me the question, how do we identify who the stewards are? Well, if you're an organization that created, and I'm just going to pick a, it's a project, a data warehouse project, the individuals that you would identify to become involved in the defining of the data that get into your data warehouse could potentially be data stewards. The people that are involved in the discussions, involved in the decision making, could naturally become data stewards as well, or at least be identified as data stewards. Again, we don't necessarily want to give them the title of data steward, but these are people that are already doing this type of work. My suggestion is that we just identify them, we record them somewhere, and I'm going to share with you a tool to be able to record some of that information in a minute here. So a lot of organizations that have a role called data steward, and I'm going to suggest to you that there may be a couple different types of stewards within organizations. There's what we call an operational data steward, who is somebody that works within a business unit, finds, produces, or uses data as part of the job. They have hands-on knowledge of the data they use or the data that's used by their unit, um, and so that's how we identify them as being operational stewards. Again, we don't give them the title of being data steward. We just identify them as people that need to know the rules associated with how data can be used and how data should be defined across the organization. So the operational stewards, and the, out of all the different types of stewards, there's more operational data stewards than there are anything else. There's another role that I call the data domain stewards, and those are individuals who have responsibility for a certain subject area of data across the enterprise. And in the past, I've stated in my webinars that data domain steward, or whatever you call it within your organization, a data trustee, a data custodian, a data maintenance person, um, data domain steward is the most difficult role to identify within an organization. Um, again, these are people that are facilitating resolution of issues pertaining, pertaining to that, that domain of data. Organizations, these domain stewards may or may not have the decision-making authority for, for the domain of data, but at least they're people that facilitate conversations in regards to that data across business units of the organization. And then there's another role called a data steward coordinator, when they work in a business unit, they, you know, they know who the, domains, the, the domain stewards are, they know who the operational data stewards are that reside in their area, and they're the, kind of the point person for discussion, uh, point pay, person for communication with the data governance team, the data domain stewards, and the operational data stewards. So that that I mentioned a little earlier, 
um, that shows the different roles and responsibilities associated with a non-invasive data governance program. Um, down here, and I'm going to see if I can kind of circle some of these things. The operational level, that's one that I just talked about a moment ago. Those are individuals that work within a specific business unit that have responsibility for that data within that business unit, but not necessarily outside that business unit. When we still identify people that have responsibility for data across business units, that's the next level up. That's the tactical level. And those are individuals that have responsibility for a certain subject area of data across the organization rather than just within their, um, within their business unit. To share with you some examples of that in organizations, oftentimes the, the finance data steward or the finance data domain steward would often be the, the controller for that organization. The um, who is the HR data steward may potentially be the VP of HR in your organization. But these are people that are looking at the definition, production, and usage of data. Uh, same data, but across the organization as an organizational asset. In organizations, there's not just a natural person who identified to be your domain steward. So sometimes it takes some, um, some um, analysis of who does what with the death and who the two people are for the um, for different types of data. And if there's already a person that you go to to answer your questions about a specific subject area of data, my suggestion is that they potentially could be the, um, the domain stewards or the subject matter experts for data across the organization. The Data Governance Council, we're not really going to talk about that in this session here, but the Data Governance Council is a strategic part of the organization. It's individuals that represent the different business areas for an organization, um, and they're the ones that, that make decisions if the domain stewards don't have the ability to make those decisions or don't have the authority to be able to make those decisions. So I'm going to walk through specifically what a data steward does in a couple of slides here. Uh, first, I want to just kind of highlight the tactical level and the operational level. So if your organization just identifies people to data stewards, you might want to differentiate between who are data stewards specifically for the data within their business areas and who are the data stewards for the data that crosses across the organization. So that's the difference between the operational stewards and the, uh, and the tactical stewards or the data domain stewards. Um, I mentioned that, that it would be great if we could identify and we could record who all the stewards are within the organization. And I shared this diagram in previous webinars as well. I call this the common data matrix. And the common data matrix, all it really does is it cross-references the different sub-areas of data that you have in your organization, like customer data and finance data. And it cross-references them with the different parts of your organization, whether it's people in IT, it's people in corporate units or in business units. So my suggestion is that you want to record at least where the organization the operational stewards exist. If there's a change to a business role associated with a specific type of data, we want to know without, without any guessing who people are across the organization that use that are stakeholders in that data. And oftentimes share an example uh, where was working with the, uh, the credit card of a, of a large bank recently where they needed to change the fee structure associated with their credit card, and they weren't sure of where the credit card data was being used across the organization, and they changed it everywhere where they thought that it needed to be changed, and they got 98% right. They missed a couple of different areas that were specific stakeholders and users of that data, and, uh, and because of that, they missed out on $8 million of revenue over a two-year period period because they didn't change the fee structure because, again, they didn't know where in the organization that data was being defined, produced, and used. So in this common data matrix, when a row meets a column, you either list the people's names in the, in the box or you could just put an X in the block that says, this part of the organization, uh, they are people that are stakeholders in this data, 
and we need to identify who they are so we can communicate with them effectively regarding changes and things that are happening to the data that they define, produce, and use. So it's very simple to develop one of these things. Um, First thing you want to do is you may want to define the different parts of your organization across the top. The next thing you may want to do is identify the domains of data and put those down on the left-hand side. So in this example here, I have customer data and I have finance data, but I also have different subdomains of data across the organization. So customer address data, demographic, financial data in regards to the customer. The fact is these domain stewards that look at data as a, as a corporate asset or an organizational asset rather than a business unit by business unit asset, you know, we need to identify who they are, we need to record who they are, we need to let them know what parts of the organization use the different types of data across the organization. And last but not least, a minute. these people here, so once you've defined your domains or subject areas of data down the left-hand side of the matrix, in different parts of your organization across the top, it becomes very easy for you to go to those parts of the organization and identify, well, who are operational stewards of data or are operational stewards of the data in that part of the organization. And if there are, we just make sure that it's recorded and they can use that information when we need to to effectively govern data in our organization. So one of the responsibilities of the operational data stewards um, operational data stewards define the data that will be used by their part of the organization, how that data will be used, how that data will be managed. The data producers are people that produce data as part of their job. The data users be absolutely anybody in your organization. So when I talk about operational data stewards, the fact is there's even different types of operational data stewards within an organization. There's the definers, the producers, and the users. And the accountabilities that go with the different relationships that people have to data are very vital in the role of how those stewards will be utilized. Some additional responsibilities for the operational data Stewards, they, they create or review data definitions. They're responsible for the integrity and the quality of data definition. They're responsible for producing, creating, updating, deleting, archiving the data that will be managed. They're, they're responsible for all of those things that you see on this page here. But most importantly, the last two bullets that you see there, those are typical responsibilities of the operational data stewards. They're responsible for communicating new and changed business requirements to people that will be impacted. They have responsibility for communicating concerns, issues, and problems uh, that they have with the data to the people that can influence change. So these are some of the responsibilities that the operational data stewards have, but it doesn't answer the question of what do these data stewards do? And I'll spend a little bit of time talking to you about that. That. So now that we've defined what a steward is, let's talk about what a steward does. So typically, stewards act in one of two ways. They either act proactively or they act reactively. Proactively is when you build the things that stewards do into specific activities that are already in place in your organization. And one of the examples I like to share is if a system development lifecycle methodology I'm suggesting that you would want to go out and you would change the methodology. What I am suggesting is that you want to make sure when you're going to utilize operational stewards in what part of the methodology and define specifically what they do during that step of the methodology. The reactive data governance activities are activities that are associated with solving a problem. So if you've got a problem, we're, we may go about resolving that problem, and then we may utilize the stewards a little bit differently than when we want to build what they do into the, the regular processes and things that we have in our organization. How do we recognize? How do we assign stewards? Well, I would suggest that we want to identify stewards and we want to recognize stewards. Um, first of all, um, to identify them is just a matter of, of noting who they are and recording them somewhere like in a common data matrix. Recognizing stewards, that's actually a suggestion that was given to me by the United States Air Force when I worked with them a few years back. If we recognize people as stewards, it sounds a lot more distinguished. It sounds like we're distinguishing their responsibility, and again, we're recording it somewhere. You know, assigning a data steward, that to me sounds a little bit too invasive. When you assign something to somebody, they're obviously going to feel that this is over and above the existing 
existing work culture of their organization, and oftentimes people react negatively to being assigned things when certain things, when, when the equal amount of work work is not taken away from them as well. So whether we identify, recognize, or assign data stewards really depends on the approach that we're taking to governance. So this one slide in there real quickly because a lot of people have been um, have, have looked at this slide and said that this is kind of one slide that kind of summarizes the way the governance program needs to do. And if we look at this real quickly, on the left hand on the left hand side we have a policy statement. In the middle, we have different principles that we may apply to the stewards and to the data in our organization. And on the right hand side, we have the dimensions of how are we going to measure whether or not we're improving the way that governance, that the data is being governed. So obviously, we want to be able to communicate some of these things with the people that we identify and recognize as stewards so we get a good understanding of what the goal of data governance is in the organization. Oftentimes it is to recognize data as a valued asset to, to in a data governance program to clearly define accountability. Uh, data must be managed for most organizations or all organizations to follow internal and external rules and data quality must be managed consistently across the life cycle. So again, this is a, a slide. It's kind of if it fits where I put it in the slide deck, but it's to help you to understand what some of the big basic things that we need to communicate to people as, a, as data stewards. Basis is what you see in the middle there. Those are the primary principles of governance in a lot of organizations. So we're going to proactively get the stewards to do what they are, what they used to do. Um, oftentimes we kind of just build guns into these existing procedures. So a couple things I'm going to share with you real quickly, and I noticed that somebody had asked a question uh, uh, earlier in the session about the RACI diagram and giving people responsibility, accountability, you know, those types of things. I'm going to share with you a tool that may help you to define those things. A system development life cycle methodology, project planning. You know, one of the things that I, one of my pet peeves is that organizations call these things data governance processes. And the risk that we run by calling things data governance processes is that people think that data governance interferes with what they're doing, uh, that it's going to be over and above the existing work that people do. Well, my suggestion is let's not call these things data governance processes. Let's apply governance to things that already, to processes and procedures that already exist within the organization. So the concepts of the non-invasive data governance, let's talk about not giving people new job titles and recognizing that the majority of their work isn't going to change. Let's identify them and engage them according to their present responsibilities. Let's not create new tasks or time commitments, but let's make certain that the appropriate stewards that we've recorded now into this common data matrix, make sure they are engaged in the appropriate ways um, in the appropriate tasks. I know this slide is a little bit difficult to read, and I'm not going to really talk to the details that are uh, in each of the blocks of this diagram. But if you look at it down the left-hand side of this uh, matrix, some typical steps of a system development life cycle methodology, information gathering, assessing requirements, planning, you know, the things that would be typical for most organizations as part of system development or a application development life cycle methodology, across the top of this matrix, we identify the different roles that are associated with our governance program, whether it's IT roles, data domain steward roles, operational data steward roles, and this is where we can document what data steward does. So during this phase of the methodology, the different stewards have these different responsibilities that are associated within this matrix. And again, it's just an easy way of being able to view um, specifically what a data steward does and when they do it. Uh, a lot of the organizations that I've worked with, the first question that a person that's identified as a data steward um, has is, well, when I get involved, what do I do? How do I, um, how do I get involved? How do I know when I need to get involved? And this data governance activity matrix kind of goes a long way towards uh, addressing when people, when the different people that have been identified as either domain stewards or 
um, operational stewards when they get engaged in the different processes in your organization. Again, what we haven't done is we haven't redefined the methodology. All we've done is really applied governance to the, to the methodology. And my suggestion is rather than defining them as all new processes, let's, uh, let's take advantage of the processes that we've already um, identified and let's associate stewards with, with them. Here's um, another picture I've shared with people throughout uh, different uh, webinars. This is called the Governance Action Plan Addendum. And, and if you look on this closely, you'll see that there's six primary activities that a lot of organizations focus on when they're implementing governance. They focus on resolving or researching information quality issues, identifying and monitoring risk, monitoring quality, validating uh, uh, measures, all these different types of things. And so these are uh, six of the primary things that I see most organizations, uh, most of the processes that organizations apply governance to, therefore engage their data stewards in the activities. Now, if I go on to the next piece of the slide, you'll see that, for example, if you would have clicked on where it says resolve or research information quality issues, up would come a box that says these are the specific steps and what we do to resolve or research information quality issues, and these are the different roles of the organization. We can identify who is responsible, who's accountable, who should be consulted, who should be informed through the different steps of each of these different types of processes that we apply governance to. So, you know, we've already answered the question of what a steward is. A steward be anybody. There, there are people that find, produce, and use data as part of their job. But the question when do we engage them, we can answer those questions by putting together either the matrix that was on the prior page or um, or this matrix, and we can really spell out for them, you know, if they've been identified as a steward, when they're involved, what they'll do, what they'll have accountability for, what they'll have responsibility for, and so on. So and this is another tool, a very simple spreadsheet I had developed for a client uh, some time ago where you could click on each of the different processes and it would give you a detail as to what the data stewards do as a part of that process. So if you'd like to get copies of the uh, of some of these detailed slides or, or some of these um, tools and templates, please make the request of Shannon and we'll make sure that we um, we add this to, the, uh, to what we send to you in the next 24, 40 hours. Another example of something that would, again, cross-reference a different role of the program with different activities. So in this organization, they defined a bunch of steps for restructuring their data warehouse. They defined the different roles associated with their governance program, and they documented what each specific role does in each different step of, of this process of restructuring the data warehouse. Uh, in some organizations, they'll put how much time is expected, um, when they get involved, what decisions they need to make. There's a whole bunch of different things that uh, is not kind of a one-size-fits-all solution for even putting together this governance matrix activity. But again, I always tell people that if you're a if you're a consultant, you, you view things in two different ways. One is um, in in a matrix, and I have a whole bunch of different matrices, and the other way is with the other Pyramid uh, consultants to use pyramids and matrices a lot. These matrices would really help you in your organization to be able to answer the question of what a data steward does and how they get involved. Now, well, I'm, I'm running out of time, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. But here's another example of uh, again the, the what they do, the who does it and then the details of what they do during each of the steps of the different parts of that process. So uh, we talked about that in a proactive way. So we build governance into the processes and procedures that we as an organization can do. Or type the, the reactive way of, uh, of identifying what stewards does is if you have a methodology for how you resolve issues, you could do the same thing that we did with the activity matrices that I showed on the previous pages. We could document down the left-hand side what are the different steps that we follow to resolve issues, and then across the top we could put the different roles and we can identify when do we engage specific stewards in specific activities in regards to what a steward does and when they get involved. 
So here is an example just from the uh, from the picture that I showed you. Again, it details the different steps for resolving researching information quality issues and take the different roles that you've defined as part of your as part of your program, and you become very specific as to how different stewards get involved, in what different ways do they get involved, and what exactly do they do. An organization I was working with recently, they put together a, um, a very high level outline of what they do to solve issues. They identify and document issues, they ratify issues, they implement and control. And here's the sub-steps that are listed underneath the, the, the kind of the primary steps of uh, the different steps for resolving issues. Well, the next slide I'll show you is we take that same concept of the different steps to resolve an issue. We identify again across the top of the matrix who different individuals are that participate in your data governance program. And again, we explicitly define what each different role does in each different part of the methodology for resolving issues. So it does is it takes all the guesswork out of who gets involved and when they get involved. It takes all the guesswork out of a uh, lot of what they do, and, and in some organizations, they even put an additional column off to the far right-hand side, which says that what's the outcome of of, uh, of involving these stewards in these specific steps of this methodology. And uh, I actually gave a presentation, a real-world data governance uh, webinar, not too long ago, on metadata governance. And so the same thing can be applied to metadata governance. If we define what the steps are of our metadata methodology, down one side, and we define the different roles across the top, we can be very specific as to what the different steward roles do in the different parts of the, the metadata methodology. So again, it's just kind of another way of looking at what we've looked at on the previous slides, but this one is more focused on the guidance of metadata within an organization. So about formalizing accountability, that's the, once we've identified who the stewards are, identified where the stewards reside within the organization, um, we can start to formalize their involvement in different day-to-day -day or project-type uh, governance activities. So what we're really doing is um, we're, we're taking the different roles and we're being very specific as to what they do during the different steps. And then the reality is that if you go to people and say, well, this is exactly how we want you to get involved in resolving issues, this is what we want you to get involved in new projects and those types of things, um, their first question is going to be, well, what do I need to do? What, how do we formalize that? How do we make sure that the people that are identified as stewards know um, precisely what they're supposed to do during these processes? So there's already people in your organization that define, produce, and use that as part of everyday jobs. One of my suggestions is that we've got to know who they are. We have a, a, a consistent way of being identif of identifying and recognizing them, a consistent way of recording them, and then a, a consistent way of using this information that we've recorded um, to, to engage stewards at the appropriate time something that I've heard referred to as the Bill of Rights, getting the right person involved at the right time to do the right thing, to get the right results, all those types of things. It's kind of like a Bill of Rights. But that's really the idea of what governance is. And once we've identified the stewards and we've identified the processes and we're going to engage the stewards, that, that takes you 90% of the way there to, uh, to developing a governance program in your organization. If you recognize that there's already people in your organization that are stewards, then we want to make sure that they're involved in the appropriate ways in different processes across the organization. Again, just to go back quickly to the article that I, I wrote in uh, the last issue of the TDAN publication, Signers' Roles for Becoming a Data Steward. You know, again, a steward can be anybody. The stu being a steward describes a relationship. The stewards aren't hired. They don't need to have the title of data steward. They don't need to be told how to do their job. They just need to be told when to get engaged. In the, at the appropriate time, um, that I don't believe that the industry or public certification is necessary. There's more than one steward per type of data in your organization. And really, data steward training is most organizations needs to be focused on formalizing people's accountability and getting them involved in the right way at the right time in your organization. 
So I kind of went through a lot of things really quickly here. And, and pardon me again, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, so my voice is cracking a little bit. One of, one of the things I wanted to highlight for you are the upcoming webinars, the May webinar, which is going to be a panel of practitioners, the June webinar, which is going to be interviews with leaders from the DGIQ conference, conference for master data. A suggestion would be go to dataversity.net, and you can see all the information about these webinars and future webinars in the Real World Data Governance Series or in any of the other series that Dataversity holds. What we talked about is that the data steward role really depends on the approach to governance that you're taking in your organization. We identify what stewards do and when they do it, and there's a good way of being able to document that. I can't really go through in detail how stewards will be engaged in your organization, but I did set you up with, uh, with a tool that you can use to define the specific activities for stewards during specific projects and processes in your organization. Um, if we put it into what we do, we can opera operationalize our data governance program that way. Um, and at this point, I'd like to kind of open up the floor for any questions. If there are questions regarding data stewards, uh, data steward and what do they do? Shannon? I have a lot of questions coming in. And of course, the most common question is if people can get a copy of the slides and just to let everybody know. Uh, and just to re reiterate, I will send up out a follow-up email within two business days, so by the end of day, Monday, uh, with containing links to the slides, links to the recording, and everything else requested throughout the webinar. We had a ton of requests for the um, matrices and the, and the templates that you use, so if, if you could send those over to me, I'll make sure to include those as well in the follow-up email. Um, and just so everyone knows, the follow-up email comes directly from me, so if you don't get it by that day, Monday, or before you get in in your office on Tuesday, just send me an email, Shannon, at dataversity.net, and I'll be sure and get you all that info. And of course, you know, we have some great questions for you, Bob. Um, some of the things we might want to mention is that if, if we mm -hmm. don't get to all the questions, I'll answer them in a separate, uh, separately, and we'll include that in the email that we send to these folks as well. Absolutely. Great. Um, Awesome. With that, we'll get the question started. So uh, how should a good approach to start the formalizing accountability? I understand that creating positions for data stewards is not, not the good one. How should it be? The suggestion is that in organizations that, that acknowledge the fact that there's already stewards within the organization, we might want to identify who were the people that we talked to in regards to a specific project. As I mentioned before, the people that are involved the definition of the data for a data warehouse, in fact, be the stewards of that specific type of data in their part of the organization. So before we go out and tag each of them and say, you're a data steward, start doing data steward stuff, what we want to do before that is we want to identify, well, who's already doing some of this stuff, and let's record that somewhere. So when we go to these people to discuss with them the fact that they're a data steward, we can say, well, this is why we've identified you as a data steward. Because you are already defining data, or you're already producing data as part of your job. And therefore, what we need to do is formalize the accountability for what these individuals that have hands on the data are doing with the data across the organization. So that would be a suggestion, is take your existing activities, existing projects, and see who are the people that we engaged in those projects. And more than likely, those are going to be some data stewards. And you mentioned the question on the RACI earlier, but let me ask the question just to make sure we didn't miss any points from, from the questioner. Um, is it more difficult to form accountability if there are more than one person uh, as a data steward for the same data? I think, yeah. I think in some ways, yeah, it might be a little bit more difficult to formalize that accountability, but the reality is that there are multiple people in the organization that are stewarding the same data. And we want to document that, and we want to record that. And so what we can do is if people are entering data into the system as part of their job, we want to make sure that they understand the impact of how they're entering data into, the, into these systems. So in fact, there may be multiple people in an organization that are entering, system, entering data into a system, but they all have the same accountability to make sure that the data that they enter into the system is accurate and appropriate. So, yeah, it might be a little bit more difficult to formalize the accountability of multiple people, um, 
the fact is that there's another type of steward that I talked about, which is the data domain steward, and there are people that have responsibility for that data across the organization. And typically, you would only have one of those or maybe two of those who are the decision makers for that data across the organization. So yes, I understand the concern, but the fact is we, it's just something that we, we need to deal with because we should acknowledge the fact that there are multiple people that are stewarding the same data across the organization. Perfect. And if people are not identified as a data steward for a particular data domain, um, it would be a situation where many cooks spoil the food so when it comes to defining a particular data domain attributes and their usage. Um, so the, the questioner would like to hear your input on, on what to do in that situation. I'm not sure I, I took a question out of that, um, but the thing we want to do is we want to identify people that have their hands on the data and we want to record that somewhere. So um, the fact that there may be numerous people that are defining, producing, and using the same data across the organization is fairly typical. In fact, it is consistent across every organization that I've seen. So part of the governance program and part of the responsibility of the domain steward and the people that are running the program is to engage the appropriate people at the appropriate time. So again, I'm not sure that answered the question. I'm not really sure. I saw the question in there. I'll try to do it better in the written answer. I think that I think that was fine. You just wanted to know your opinion on that. So that um, next is what exactly the what should the data steward do? Um, should they care about the new customer that is being recorded into the, into the CRM system? Should they care about the data model of the new application that is in development phase? Should they care about uh, DW uh, info cubes? The answer to, the, to all of those questions is yes. They should be concerned about all those things, but the fact is they may not be involved in the data modeling. They may not be involved in the data entry. They may be involved in interpreting reports and using reports for their jobs. So they should have formalized accountability for each of the things that are related to the relationship to the data. They may not necessarily be concerned with what the data model is going to look like if they don't have any input into the data model model, um, unless they feel that they should have put into what the definition of the data should be across the organization. So I would say yes, the individuals that are identified as stewards should be concerned about all those things, but most specifically the things that they are specifically involved in. Perfect. But what if, if one is labeled as operational information steward? Who will do the huge work of taking care of the data quality? Well, um, people who have been identified as being the operational stewards, you don't necessarily need to go out and give them the title of operational data steward, but um, the people that are going to be involved are the, you know, are the people that need, the people from the appropriate parts of the organization that have some input into how specific issues should be resolved, how Specific data should be defined, so we don't we can enable them as information stewards or data stewards. Um, and the, yes, they will have a large amount of activities, but the activities that they'll be involved in are activities that they're probably already involved in. So again, we don't want them to feel as though this is over and above the existing work effort of the organization. We just want them to know what the appropriate way is to behave in different steps of different products and processes and procedures. We have time for one more question, but as Bob mentioned, if you have keep the questions coming, and we'll be sure to get you written answers in the follow-up email. Um, just uh, so to that, let me get to the next question here. Uh, so just along the lines, and from the same questioner, but no one is doing the work of this role. Is there any other way of doing it, otherwise assigning the role for someone else? It will be a lot more invasive than the uh, approach that I suggest. And if that's what it takes in your organization is to assign people to be data stewards, by all means do it. There's not a one-size-fits-all um, solution for data governance. So if it requires that we go out and we assign people and then that we're going to evaluate them based on what they do and how they get involved, then by all means do that. But what I'm suggesting is a less invasive approach where we're really just identifying the people 
and we're going out to them and saying, this is how we want you to be active, this is how we want you to be engaged. And oftentimes people will look at it and say, hey, I'm already doing that. already." And so this isn't going to be that, that much over and above the existing work that I presently do. So, you know, my suggestion is that we, we try not to assign people. We try to identify and recognize people as just a matter of course. Uh, it, it will really have some impact on the way that your governance program is accepted within your organization. Bob, thank you so much. We are right at the top of the hour, and we just have so many questions. So I'll make sure and get those to you and get answers out to everyone. Thank you, everyone, for such great interaction in these questions. And, and Bob, there was a lot of comments um, just about how great and useful this information is. So thank you for, for the quality education for everyone, and, and we really appreciate it. And everyone, thanks so much for attending. This was a great, great webinar. So, thank you. You know, you know, we like doing these things, and I uh, look forward to doing them next month, and I hope everybody will return. Everyone, well, thank you very much. Again, I'll get the top email out to you by the end of day on Monday. So let me know if you have any questions in the meantime, Shannon at dataversity.net. And in the follow-up email, make sure you have all of Bob's contact information that you see on the screen there as well as uh, all the links to everything. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for attending. Thank you.